Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am sitting here with my thinking cap on. I wanted to do a video and it seems like when I have to force myself to come up with something, it's like next to impossible to come up with anything. But today was a little different. <laughs> it just like all fell into place, except I don't know for sure because look, I haven't even attempted anything yet. Here's the story behind this fabric. Uh, not too long ago, I got some of this fabric and I cut it into 10 inch squares to go along with a different uh, set. It was like, I don't know, four prints that were supposed to go together. After I was done cutting, I noticed that there were some lines in here that I didn't like. Um, it's like almost next to impossible to see, but there's like some black lines that I wasn't 100% sure they belonged. I don't know. It's like a repeating mistake. It probably belongs there, but I wasn't thrilled with it. So I just put them aside and I said, huh, I'll think of something. There's 24 of these 10 inch squares. I also happen to have this that I brought with me from Maine. These are 8 inch squares of batting that I was selling once upon a time and I cut them 8 inch so they could be for rag quilts with 10 inch squares. I happen to have 12 of these. I think I was selling sets of 20 and this one was not complete and instead of just tossing that I put it in one of my boxes and they came with me to Mississippi. So <laughs> I'm thinking 24 10 inch squares, 12 8 inch squares of batting, Perfect, right? I can use this fabric for the front and back of each square. And then I can put that together and have it be a blanket for a cat or dog. It should be a pretty big blanket. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I just know that there's an idea here somewhere. Because even if those are marks that aren't supposed to be there, I don't think any animal is going to care. A human might not even care. The other thing is, I do not want to actually make a rag quilt. I do not feel like doing the snipping because I'm quite busy. And I don't even have a washer and dryer here because the moving company broke mine. And I don't feel like going to Derek's to do a load with just this, plus Derek and Skylar are in Nashville, so I don't need to be there all alone. So I'm going to think of a different way to join. It might make it a little stiff, but again, if it's on the floor for a pet, that's cool. Let me figure out exactly what I want to do and we'll get started. I think it will be easy to get started because I think I'm going to just take two squares. See, eight inches inside ten inches. It gives plenty of room after you sew these together to snip. So for rag quilting, which I haven't done in forever, you want the right side down, then your piece of batting, and then you want another one right side up. Oh, there is a right and wrong to these, so I will put them in the same direction, but just to show you, it's going to go like this, and then I'm just going to take some white thread and I'm going to sew an X. And I just will make all the um, flamingos going in the same direction. So when I put it together, flamingos are, you know, facing the right way up, and these are too. So let me do that to this stack. I'm going to do all 12 of these squares with an X. I was doing this one on camera, and I was having a couple of issues with my thread. I just think I had to, like, re-thread it. I don't know seems to be good now and I'm only telling you that because there was a couple of places where it skipped a beat. Oh, one more right there. So I'm just going over it and I'm really only letting you know this because this will be on eBay as a penny auction, whatever I end up with. So I just want you to know, don't expect any level of perfection. I even put that in my description. So I see some more skipped. So I'm just going to go on this one again. So this one will be double stitched. Much better. No one is going to notice that. Just everyone. Hmm. 
Okay. That was unfortunate. But shit happens. Now I'm going to do all the rest of these. And I wanted to mention, when you hop on and hop off, don't worry if your corners are not perfect or if they're even flipped up a little bit. That's all going to be hidden, assuming I do what I have in my head. And even if you swerve and you don't do a perfect straight line, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you start at a corner and end at a corner, it doesn't matter what you do in here. And I have them all done. I thought, since I haven't done this before, I might have done something like it. I thought I'd put some of this together so I could act like I knew what I was doing. And I have made so many mistakes. <laughs> this is probably the worst sewing project I've done. I think I've said that before. I can't remember what it was, some kind of little pet bed or something. No, this is the worst. And I think if I ever felt like doing it again, I could improve on it. I've already made some improvements, but I've already sewn two squares together and then had to pick it all out. The next time I made that same mistake, I just left it. <laughs> now I've noticed that one of my flamingo blocks is upside down like this. But you know, it's not 100% directional. I do see how some, like see, the flamingo is upright, but this one is sideways. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. I certainly didn't pick it out uh, because of an upside down block. Oh my goodness, am I even going to know what to tell you? Just know, if you win this on eBay, seriously, this is a half-ass job. I mean, it's just, it's embarrassing. But again, maybe it will find a good home with the right dog or cat. This is big enough for maybe a child, I don't know, or a lap quilt. But just picture it on the floor with a muddy dog on it, okay? It's, it's good for that. I'm going to do a row with you, and then I'm going to connect a row to another row. And then I just have to put the first half that I made together with that. And I'll be very anxious to be done this project. <laughs> I am going to, on purpose, to show you that uh, if I pay attention, I can have the blocks going in the right direction. I'm going to put them like this, one on top of the other. It's going to be kind of hard to show you. Isn't this, isn't this fun? And I'm going to put the top block about, I don't know, like a half an inch in. See? See what I did? Top block here. I haven't trimmed any of these. And the bottom block is like this. Maybe even more than a half inch. A little bit more than a half of an inch. And this block, you want to make sure you capture both of those edges. So you can see I have one edge that is, you know, shorter than the other. So you put the shorter one on top because that's one of the mistakes I made, just one of them. I had it this way, and then when I sewed, I didn't capture the bottom one. You know what I mean, jelly bean? I'm even having a hard time to show you. Maybe I can do this. <laughs> I can think of something. And now I'm just going to sew, and I'm going to make sure that I'm, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch in from you know, this piece. Oh my God. You're never, you're never going to want to attempt this and I don't blame you. And that's it. We're just going to sew. And if it puckers, it puckers. We're going to live with that. I know there's methods like this, but I wanted to do it a simple way. And it's, I think that's not an easy thing to discover. There is no simple with this. 
And what was the other thing? And it's going to be a flat fold type thing. Now, before I forget what order I'm in, I'm going to open this and I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to take my piece and I see that I can see my bottom fabric, so I'm going to lay it like this. I'm not going to care too much about um, if anything's straight. <laughs> Just going to sew. I'm gonna what run out of thread? Is that how this whole night is going to go? I even checked the bobbin before starting and I had almost a full bobbin. I can't believe I used up that much thread for this little project. So now when I open it up it looks just like normal sewing on this side, but then on this side we got all this bullshit going on. And that's what we kind of want. There's the whole wadded up mess <laughs> that happened when I ran out of bobbin thread. Now you can see here, we've got all this going on. We've got the little part and the bigger part. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be folding this down and then down again. So everything's going to be enclosed. But we have a choice. I prefer to fold in this direction so I'll be sewing on the right side of this hump. Or you can turn it this way if that's the way you like to do it. And you can see that's all your raw edges there, so that has to be closed up. You just want to, you know, make sure your stuff is opened. And you can tuck in, tuck in, and then sew this side to the left of the thread, which probably makes more sense. Because I have a hard time staying on that hump when I'm going in the other direction. I mean, everything was hard about this, everything. <laughs> oh, and here's another thing I'm going to try right now. When you do this and sew, this becomes very thick and we have to join to the next row. And it was like, you know, sewing over a small mountain. So I'm going to trim some of this off here. So I'm just going to go in about, I don't know, a, like a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to trim that and take that off. Just to have a little less bulk. I don't know if it's going to help because I haven't done it until right now. So I'm going to go down and across. Now I'm going to do my fold and fold. And don't worry about that little corner that we just cut out because we'll be covering that hopefully when we finish. Oh, huh, I don't know. Okay, here I go. Now I'm just sewing close to that edge that I have all folded under. And then I just keep doing it. I don't use pins or anything like that. It probably would help if I did all those things but then it wouldn't be as fun because you wouldn't be able to watch me suffer. <laughs> okay, so on this side, which is so unfortunate because it's that awful bunched up bobbin mishap side, you got something like this going on. You can see the two stitch lines. Looks like almost like the edge of jeans. And on this side, we have just one stitch line and one folded over hump. Now, on the parts that I already made, I didn't even have my humps going in the same direction. Terrible, terrible job. Now, if you wanted to, you could sew down here. But what's going to happen is it's going to make a third stitch line on this side. So don't do that. Now let's do the little trick of trimming again like about a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch. I know I have so many people screaming at me and I can't hear them. And now I'm going to go fold this down and down. 
I don't care at all how big, you know, how wide this flat seam is or how narrow. I, I don't care about that. There's too much else to care about. <laughs> I have enough worries. Just going to sew. I added puckers there without wanting to. Something new. Something new that I've done wrong. Oh. How am I going to finish the border around the edge? I guess I'm just going to have to fold. <laughs> it's those big bumps that I don't like. Like, not at all. All right. I have two rows completed. Now we're going to do the same thing, but I have to stop and think how. You guys, I have no idea if this is going to work. I can't remember what I did before, and I'm very tired now. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure that my two strips are somewhat the same size. You know, the same size this way. And they look like they're okay enough. Now, I'm going to call this side that has just the one sewing line and the bump. I'm going to call that the back side, the wrong side. So I'm putting the wrong sides together. This has the one stitch and the bump. One stitch and the bump. So if I had it this way, I would have my, my swans. <laughs> They're flamingos in the same direction. And then I just do that. So wrong sides together. And I'm going to once again do the same like I did with the blocks. I'm going to have a good half inch or more. So the bottom row is here. And then this one starts about a half inch in. I'm not concerned. I know you will never make this. Oh my goodness, now I have to open this up and I have to do that thing again where I'm going to fold this to cover all those raw edges that I have on this side. So I'm going to fold and fold. Now I'm coming up to that mountain that I have to get over. I think it helped a little bit that I snipped that, but I don't know. It's still big. Very slow, doing it by hand. I made it. I made it over the mountain. I don't think I'm even going to capture the raw part of that after I snipped. Can't believe I didn't break a needle doing this. I have to attach this half now to the half I previously did. I don't know if I'm going to record that part because I'd like to spend the whole rest of this video crying. <laughs> but let's see at least the putting together part. Let's see if I can remember. Oh my goodness, these are going in the opposite direction. That's probably good because it wasn't so thick. These are not. Lots of little thready things going on. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so what did I say? I said I wanted wrong sides together. I'm considering this the wrong side with just the one stitch line. So wrong side, and I have to do wrong side, but I want to make sure that everybody's going in the same direction. Like that. Like a, oh, and here's my upside down block. <laughs> Okay, I have wrong sides together, I think, and I think my direction is okay. And I'm pushing this one down about a half of an inch. And I'm just going to sew. Oh yeah, now I have to do that other part for that middle part. 
that I have to fold this over. I don't know. I'm not trimming things. I'm just going to fold and sew. I'm coming to the big mountain again and there was nothing snipped. I can do it. Damn, I'm good. Another mountain. Now what? I'm stuck. I know I have thread. Are you going to unsubscribe now? <laughs> you probably already have. No one's going to ever want to watch me again. I might have just ended my career. <sighs> I'm not done. I have to figure out a border all the way around. I just thought that I wasn't recording and I almost had a heart attack and then I instantly thought it would have been better off if I wasn't <laughs> recording. All right, you guys. Um, I don't want to do any trimming because I don't like this. I think I might call this side the right side. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to fold and sew top and bottom and then the sides. No, I'm going to do the sides first. That's the longer part. I'm going to fold twice, just like I'm hemming something. That's how I'm going to finish this. Oh my God, it's going to be so hard on those corners, but I don't care. I don't care. I know you're all screaming at me as to how I could bind this, do different things. Don't want to do it. Okay, I'm uh, being bugged by the camera being in my way, so it's a good reason to uh, shut you guys off for a little bit. Let me finish this, and uh, after I rest, <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm done, and I did not cry. <laughs> in fact, I had a lot of fun with this video. So let me um, snip some threads and stuff, and then we'll see. We'll take a look at it. How's that sound? Hope it sounds good. My lighting is so wrong, just like this little blanket. <laughs> so wrong. You know, actually, it's kind of cute, but I'm telling you, it's a shit show if you look at it up close. And I will take some pictures at the end, but I'm going to just point some things out. Oh, first of all, let's look at the um, edge here. I just folded over and sewed, and I made it over all the mountains. That did not come out half bad, actually. But then things like here, these seams going in the same direction these two these two but in the opposite direction and then these are facing each other so there's you know a lot of little things like that and I see these flamingos are mostly face up and these are mostly face down like I said that doesn't really bother me it's uh, all over you know so it it doesn't look that bad. And then on this side, we have the double seams. The lighting is not right. You know, the intersection doesn't even match there. And it's folded this way, this one this way. I mean, everything is just screwed up. And then some parts, let's see, on, I think it's on this side. No, I'm making you seasick. <laughs> some places, I don't know, there's like a lot of threads because of the mountain climbing I had to do. Other than that, it's not that bad. It really isn't. Let me measure it. It's about 26 wide by 34, like 34 and a half long. It is a cute size for a fairly big dog. You can always fold it up or you can put it on a couch or chair that your pet, your cats, whatever, they like to sleep and you want to keep the hair off the chair. 
I don't know what else to say. It was um, <laughs> it was it was quite the thing to make, but I had fun. And I would like to remind you guys that my channel isn't just about learning how to sew or how to quilt or anything like that. It's just what I do, what I feel like doing. I record whatever I feel like recording. And I'm hoping that it at least makes you laugh every now and then. Makes you realize that, you know, things like a quilt are not the most serious things in this world. It functions. I'm sure it will function okay. And it will be on eBay for, you know, uh, starting at a penny. It's a penny auction that starts at a penny. Very rarely, if ever, I think never, have they ever ended at a penny. But the bidding starts at a penny with free shipping. You are welcome to bid if you are in the USA. It is for USA only. And I just hope that you enjoyed watching and, uh, you know, enjoying the fact that you're not the only one that gets frustrated. Because believe me, you are not. And no one would know that I have been sewing for 50 years. 51, actually, on a sewing machine. I started at 10. I'm 61 now. And uh, it's never been all that important to me to be perfect. I mean, it's absolutely not important to me at all. Back in the day when I used to make my own clothes to go out, I would whip something up. It needed to be quick. I just, you know, pretty much glued it together and I wore it. That's what I cared about. Just getting the job done. And that's what I did with this. I pushed through until the end and I think it was worth it. And in case I didn't already say it a hundred times, the link to the eBay auction is in the description below this video. Now stick around for a little slideshow.